Hi there. In this video, I will show you how to reduce typing work with the help of live templates in Android Studio. At the end of this video, you will be able to add your own live template as well. My name is Vibs. I cover theoretical stuff on YouTube. If you would like to know, however, how to build an app or make a website, just type slide node Udemy on Google and you'll be taken straight to my profile where I have several courses. Check out this one that talks about how to build a complete app. It's a bestseller course with high number of ratings as you can see here. So let's get back to studio and get our work running. Once you're back in Android Studio, just go to its setting at the top. That takes you straight to either preferences or settings. Click on that. Take a look at the option here that says editor. Let's expand it and we should be seeing live templates right here. Let's try to explore some of these templates and see what we can do with them. For example, under the Android section, notice that there is one called FBC. So all these live templates basically have an abbreviation, which is say two or three characters that you type and then you hit a tab and it completes the code for you. Let's click on this FBC and see what it looks like. So the abbreviation says FBC. So let's go back and try to initialize this inside our main activity. So right now in activity main.xml under the text section, I have text view. Let me just add an ID for this so that I can find it. So once my ID is here, I'm going to go back to the main activity here and I'll simply say FBC. Notice that it has this completion. So all I have to do is hit a tab and take a look at that. There's our text view, which we can enter here. We can enter the ID on the right hand side and we can assign this entire thing to our text view variable here. As simple as that. Live templates. Now this is a simple template actually. There are some really good ones. Let me show you. So take a look at the other constructs that are available. Some of the good ones for example is this intent view which I saw here. Let's see what this does. Just click OK here. Let's go to the same place and just write intent view. Hit a tab. Take a look at that. Bam! There is an intent constructed with the action as action underscore view and we can actually enter a URL here and we'll browse straight to that URI whether it is a geolocation or some other type of URL. That is pretty sweet, isn't it? So coming back to our template section, there are some really good ones here and I urge you to explore them. Let me show you some key ones. For example, I created a fragment here which is called my fragment. Now let me show you how to generate a constructor for this. Just write new instance, take a look at that. The complete constructor is ready. The same way, the one annoying thing that we guys have to do constantly is to make a toast. Just write toast, hit a tab, take a look at that. There's your toast. If you want to make a log statement, just say log D, hit a tab, there's your log statement. You can also have log I for log information, log E for the error message, and many other types of log statements are present as well. So here's another good one that I came across. Often we make custom views without using a template. And right now we are getting an error that is going to ask us to override the constructors. Of course, you can hit Alt Enter or Option Return on your keyboard and create the constructor. But here's another way. You can just say View Constructors and take a look at that, ladies and gentlemen. All the three constructors put up in place for you in one shot. So coming back to the settings once again, Let's go and navigate some other sections. Let me collapse Android. Take a look at Android comments. These ones are pretty simple. You can do it yourself. Log statements are over here. There is output here, which is your system.out.print stuff that is there. Other than that, you have your for and other statements in the iteration, which is for i, itar, ico. I can show you one of these right now. For example, there is itco for iterating over elements of a collection. Let's go back and try this itco and see what it looks like. You can just go there and type it go hit a tab take a look at that there's your iterator and if you had an array list basically you could just iterate over it and take objects from it so most of these templates are pretty straightforward to use i did not cover the parcelable ones because there is a website called parcellabler.com that does a pretty good job of making parcelable code you can put any class here and you can try to see what it generates. That's far better than what the template offers. So let me get to the second part of our video, which is how to make your own template. Now coming to the live templates section, let's see how we can add our own live template. Now here I am at developer.android.com and I'm going to add a live template that lets you send an email. Let's go to Android Studio. 
let's jump straight to preferences or settings and from there inside live templates let's select the android tab here notice we have the plus button on the right hand side just click on that and say live template here and let's call it send email now this is the abbreviation that you will be using in other words you write send email hit a tab and it will paste all the code over here now notice that right now the code is pretty dependent in other words there are no variables here let's just try this out it says no applicable context defined now you have to tell this live template engine where this template can be applied now in our case it's going to be java but of course not everywhere right i mean can you put it inside a method this is basically a complete method you cannot put a method inside another method in java so let's keep the area as declaration here and just click apply and click ok now let's verify this i'm going to remove this complete code here and let's just get rid of all this stuff and here i'll try to use our live template inside a method i'll say send email nothing there great now if i go to the top here that is outside the method and if i say send email take a look at that hit tab and bam there is our complete code for the live template this is great but what if i want to have my own variable names instead of the fixed addresses subject and attachment every time so let's go back to android studio and in the same place select our send email live template now here we are going to play some games first of all we are going to go to this part that says addresses and we are going to use something called a live template variable i'll just say dollar dollar here and write addresses in between and at the same time i go to the next one remove the subject part here and i'll say dollar dollar once again and put subject in between now this sounds pretty similar to php right of course there's uri attachment i'm going to remove that and follow the same process again now all these places where these variables are being used we need to replace these things over there as well for example in the put extra method here where we have intent or extra email addresses i'm going to remove that and replace it appropriately so once you have all the variables set up it should look somewhat like this where you have just made some replacements now let's try to see the effect of this in action i'm going to go back and i'm going to remove this method compose email this time just write send email and hit tab and take a look at that we are straight here at the part where we are entering the name of addresses and notice how it gets entered i hit a tab i go to the next one here i simply write subject the next one i simply write content and take a look at that that is how the live template fills stuff for us so earlier everything was working perfectly because i had some import statements at the top that were importing intents but now i just removed them if i go now and say send email here hit a tab notice that it's going to give me an error because the intent class is not found now you can remove this frustration for the user by simply going to your live template once again and specifying the full names of each class that you're using for example i just go back to preferences and live template select our send email and instead of just saying intent intent over here i'm just going to say android dot content dot intent everywhere this way the import statements won't create a problem so finally i could have the complete path of the uri i just need to put it once and the complete path of the intent again i have just used it once at the beginning notice how everything else remains the same where i have not used android.content.intent at these places click ok and if you go back to our activity this time there are no imports at the top i have got rid of all this extra imports we had all i'm going to do is just write send email here and hit that and take a look at that there is our email just add the addresses that we need just add the subject and the content that we want to send along now let's try calling this method by simply going to on create and see if it works just say compose email put the address here so there you go once you call everything put all the parameters just run the app and you should see this now remember that you need to configure your emulator with the proper email credentials so once you do that you will see this option otherwise your app will crash or you may get a message which does not trigger the email intent if you are curious read more about it on the stack overflow post where it says why cannot an email uh, be sent through the emulator so let's go back click just once here and take a look at that there's my email going
let's just oh wait a second there's no text i did it as the text didn't i okay no worries i have added another parameter for the text and let's run the app again just click just once and we are back to the part where we have the email completely constructed click send and i should be able to see it in my inbox so on running the app there is my email and it is perfect now you guys can go ahead and read more about live template variables from JetBrains WebStorm. Just Google it and you will find it out. So hopefully in this video, you guys have had some help on how to use live templates. I will see you in the further videos. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.